Hello, my name is Tony Berard. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, fighting checkers. I finally got my new set. I thought I would get it yesterday for today, and I did. I got it. Um, the previous one I had gotten was this one. And the new one I got, it's still in the plastic. I'll open it in a minute. But uh, you can see it's fighting checkers, an upgrade to checkers. And International Droughts Invented by Tony Burrard. That's the same heading there. But what's changed is uh, I darkened these up over these. And you can see them both in the same screenshot. These are a little bit lighter. These are a little bit darker. And I lightened these up some more. And you can't tell too much of a difference. But anyway, I'm going to open it up now. And uh, see what the pieces look like on top of the new board. I just got this, so I have to cut the plastic. So it's like a kid opening a Christmas present. Whenever I get a new game, I'm so happy. I feel like a kid in a candy shop. All right, so I'm opening the box. It's like a vacuum in there. All right. So here's what it looks like. Of course, they just shipped it, so I got all this packaging in here. So I'm going to get the packaging out of there. This is the way it comes. And you get this, uh, when you order it, uh, this is from the Game Crafter. Can you see it? The Game Crafter. It says, this game contains laser cut components. Laser cut items will have a slight amount of soot on and around the edges, which can be quickly wiped off. They will also have a campfire-like smell for about a week after being taken out of their bag. So you get uh, these pieces. There's um, star-shaped pieces. There's five of these and there's 40 cubes each. So again, I'm gonna, maybe I can get a little bit of viewing here. So I'm gonna take this board out of the bag and put a few pieces on it and see what they look like under the camera. Yeah, it does have a little bit of a smell. All right. So here's the board. It's out of the box now. Uh, you get these, uh, each of the boards has, uh, these are the ranks. This is the A, or the files. These are the files. This is the A file, the B file, the C file and so on, and these are the ranks. This is the first rank, the second rank, and so on, up to the tenth rank. That gives each square a unique designation. So like, this will be B4. That's B5. H6, right there. And so, uh, the, the moves can be tracked as the game goes on. I'm going to take the pieces out of the uh, bag. This is the bag. So I'm going to open the... That was easy to do. I just poured them out. All right. And so... Oh, yes. It's very easy to see these pieces now. I'll put a few black pieces on here and a few white pieces on here. I'll put a, a king or two also, a crown, as we might say. All right, so I just made this position up. Now you can see them, it's easier to see. Still slight amount of, hard to tell. It's easier to tell with the naked eye. The camera doesn't quite do justice to it, but it is better. When the very first set I got was true black on true black. You couldn't see them at all. It was terrible. I had to go down like this so that you could see them that way. But you, you can tell they're there now. So I'm not going to do any more uh, shading, lightening up. This is light enough. 
These are a little bit darker. You can, see, you can tell it's there, but it's harder to tell. But on here, it's, it's easier to see. So, all right. Well, here's the rules of uh, fighting checkers. Um, at the start of the game, uh, white's going to have 40 checkers on the first four ranks. Black will have 40 checkers on the last four ranks. So each side has 40 checkers to begin the game. And on your turn, you may move a checker forward, either straight ahead or in the two forward diagonal banks. You can move it one square. That's called a single move. You can also do a vacant hop in those same three directions. You can go vertically forward or either of the two diagonal forwards. And with nothing there, you vacantly hop over that spot. You can also do a multi-jump. Um, you could jump over your own pieces or your opponent's pieces. And so if this was the position, white can jump over his own piece and you don't take it. And you can jump over the opposing piece and the opposing piece. And these two opposing pieces would be removed from the board. And so that's how that looks. Um, and that's called a multi-jump. And again, it's in those same three directions. The two forward diagonal directions or the vertically forward direction. You can also uh, promote a piece. When you get a checker to the final rank, then you can replace it for a star piece. The star piece is the king piece. The king piece does what the regular pieces do except in all eight directions. So the king pieces, the crowns, can go left and right, and the two backwards diagonals, and vertically backward. They, they, so the king gets those new five directions that's not available to the regular pieces. The black pieces can only go vertically forward for them, or the two diagonal forwards for them. They can also do a vacant hop in those three directions, and they can jump over... They can do multi-jumps too. If you had a black piece here, then you can, uh, you can see a little bit better when I get directly over it. Suppose we have this. Then the black piece could uh, vertically jump, vertically jump, and then diagonally jump and land here. And these two white pieces would get removed. You can also jump over star pieces. They're not any different than the regular pieces. If this was like this and it was Black's turn, Black could just jump over the star piece and take it. The star piece is just a regular piece. All right. From the first move, White can move one piece according to those... I guess I'll face the camera. From the very first move, White can move one piece in accordance with those rules. After that, black and white both can move, they must move one piece according to those rules. And they have the option to move another piece as long as it's not that same piece. And so, uh, that's all the rules. So this game is very easy to explain. And uh, the object of the game is to cause your opponent to not be able to make a move because the first requirement is that they must move at least one piece according to those rules. If they've been all boxed in and they can't move a piece, then they can't satisfy that rule and the player would lose the game. Uh, the other uh, way to win the game is if you capture all of your opponent's pieces. Because then when it's their turn, they're supposed to satisfy that first rule. They must move at least one piece according to those rules. And if they don't have any pieces, they can't satisfy that rule. And so that's the game. And so um, I'm going to pause the video and set up the board. And then uh, I'll go through uh, a few moves of, a, of what might be a, an actual game. Okay, 
um, I've set the board up now, so let's look at what a, uh, a game would look like. All right, so as you can see, white has 40 pieces and black has 40 pieces. And so white might do something like um, a diagonal hop for the first move. And now it's uh, black's turn. Black gets to move two turns, two pieces. So let's say black does that for his first move, and then black can do this for the second move. Jump, jump, jump. And that uh, um, causes one of white's pieces to be removed. Now it's white's turn. White can jump back and then do a vacant hop to close off all possible jumps after that. So now each piece has one piece gone and they have a little bit more room although white has used up his space so the black still has opportunity. So now it's black's turn so black will do that and I guess black will do this. Hop over that. Now it's white's turn. So I've uh, closed off the possibilities of jumping for white. And so white might do, let's say that. Another vacant hop this way. You want to try to do vacant hops when you can to clear out space in your back regions because if this gets all clogged up and neither player can make a move, the one who cleared out more space will have more single moves and win the game because the other one will run out of moves. So now it's Black's turn. Let's see, Black might do, let's say that. Now it's White's turn. White will do that. Another vacant hop. And then Black might, let's see. Black could do that. And then a vacant hop here. So, uh, they're beginning to engage a little bit. They're certainly within striking distance of each other. So now it's White's turn. White, I guess, will do this. And Black will do this. And sometimes you might want to give away a piece just to free up some space. So, uh, let's see, what else can we do? It's White's turn. And you can use uh, chess clocks in this game too. Let's say White does that, and then a vacant hop there. Actually, a vacant hop is a bad move because that opens, that closes up the space. Let's do that. That way, black, white has a, a future one mover there and still closes the gap. So now it's black's turn. So there's better ways of doing things in this game than others. And so, oh, there's a, uh, a single space. You have to be careful. I don't know if it's possible to uh, keep everything contained, but um, Black has a nice move here. Black can do a vacant hop. And then look at this, all the way from the back. Boom, boom. Oh, that didn't work. Uh, let's see. Well, the vacant hop didn't work. I thought that would work. It needs to be here. 
this is what it needs to be. So black will do that first. And then for the second move, boom, boom. And now that removes that. And now black piece, black's piece cannot be captured here. And so white has to be careful on how white moves out of here. And white, if white leaves these two pieces here for a long time to keep that piece there, well, I guess black would have, white would have to leave these two pieces here too. And that piece so that he couldn't hop over it. So this piece is doing a lot of good for black. Now it's uh, white's turn. So now white could um, one, two, and capture both of these. And then white gets another turn. Let's say white does this, one, two, and capture that. So now it's uh, black's turn. And now the piece is, now the game is opened up. So black will do, mm, I guess black will move this piece here and then do a double jump. One, two, and capture both of these white pieces. So the tally right now is uh, black is actually, no, it's four to four, but black has this advantage here. And so Uh, assessing things, black might be a little bit better. So I'll uh, stop the uh, the video here. Uh, so that's basically the game. And so I've explained all the rules, and the object of the game is to either run the opponent out of moves or to capture all of the opponent's pieces. Um, and so these games can be gotten my piece of paper out. I have a lot of games on there now. Modern Colors Bridge, I talked about that in my last video about the cards. Uh, yeah, this was uh, from my last video about the cards, but I want to show about here. On the uh, Game Crafter site, uh, I do fireside chats, so this was my page for that. But I've got uh, six board games that I invented. Three of them are on the Game Crafter site. Fighting Checkers is, Go 12 is. I have one of those right there. It's like Go, except it's better. You, you get 12 in a row, or a 3x4, or a 4x3, or a 2x6, or a 6x2. There's other rules, but I have videos for that game. And Pythagorean Tic-Tac-Toe is on there. I don't, I don't, I haven't uh, published it officially yet, but you can still see it on the Game Crafter site. Um, I have my deck of cards. This game you, uh, embodies one of them with the deck of cards, but I have some other games. I have three solitaire games so far that I invented. I have two fun family games. And five serious games. I have a new rating system and I developed a new type of tournament called the Block Transition Tournament. All this is uh, uh, for a great gaming environment. And so I've been working at this my whole adult life. So uh, if you're seeing this now, you're seeing, you know, me reach this stage of my life after all this time of inventing. This game took me 17 years to build. This game, uh, or this rating system, took three and a half years. Some of these other games didn't take so long, but the math thing was very hard, the rating system. And the, um, the board game, Tines of Barbs, it took me a long time to invent, to invent that because I had to learn a lot of things along the way. So I'm now able to make great games like this, Fighting Checkers, that 
uh, is balanced. It's fair, you know. Uh, checkers is unfair. So is international droughts because one player gets to move first and they each move one piece. I balance the game fighting checkers because white only gets to move one piece on the first turn. After that, both players get to move two pieces. And that balances the game. So the outcome statistics between evenly matched players should be very balanced, very close to 50%. So uh, I think it is possible to get a draw in here. If you have two kings, one or two crowns, one crown on each side, then neither one can make the other one uh, lose. So it is possible to get a draw with this. But of the decisive games, it should be very balanced. Oh, I wanted to say one other thing about this game. This game is actually more complex than chess. I did the math on it. It was, uh, I think it was about 10 times more complex than chess. So, you know, this is a real brain buster. Regular checkers and even international droughts is not as complex as chess. But fighting checkers is more complex than chess. That can be a bragging point when you play this game. Somebody could say, Oh, you're playing checkers? Yes, but this checkers is more complex than chess. So that's a, a selling point for it. All right, um, I'm going to end the video now. Uh, thanks for your time. Oh, I need to say one other thing. I didn't say where to get the game. You have to go to www.thegamecrafter.com. And if you put in fighting checkers, then you'll find the game or the name of any of these other games. You should be able to find them. Thank you. This is Tony Berard signing off.